Hey guys, thanks for joining me for an episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Rail Raiders. This is a brand new game by Ninja Division Games. It's a two to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play, and it is a competitive game, so all the players are working against each other to gain the most double dollars and be the overall winner at the end of the game. So in the game itself, each of the players is going to be playing a space cowboy that is trying to board the Interstellar Express. Once on there, they're going to be trying to fight the other players or law bots to gain the most loot, which they're going to do by rolling a specially customized uh, set of dice to generate the best five card poker hands. The player that does will be the overall winner of that combat or whatever they're trying to achieve and will potentially gain double dollars. Now the game will end based on the deck of cards that is called the High Noon Deck. When that deck runs out, the, the turn will be over, the players will each get their final turn within that round, and then the game will be over, and the player that has the most double dollars at that point will be the overall winner of the game. So my opinions of this game so far are very good. As you come to expect from Ninja Division, they've made a really highly quali uh, quality, a high quality polished game. Everything from the miniatures to the cards to the boards and everything is very well done. And they've gone and, and changed things up a little bit with this one. They've put out a really nice, easy to learn, beer and pretzels basically game. The rule set to this is very light. There's not a lot of complication to it. It's very easy to teach to other players. And it's just a fun, fast, furiously played game where the players are going to be fighting each other, trying to steal the double dollars from each other, gaining different uh, special uh, treasure and loot cards and all kinds of different things to try to combat the other players or the law bots that are going to be on these cards or the uh, train cars. And it's a modular system, so each game that you play, there will be different combinations and different sections of the train that players will be fighting over. And uh, the loot uh, tokens that will generate the different number of loot cards you'll be able to pull. And there's a number of different loot cards in there too, so every game you're going to play is a little bit different. Uh, there's already six characters in the box, plus if you're a backer of the Kickstarter in that, there was a whole bunch more that they uh, unlocked with that. So there's plenty of variety there as well. So like I said, this is one that I would definitely recommend checking out if you're into combat games or lighthearted beer and pretzel games or uh, if you just like chibi miniatures or any of these type of things sound interesting to you, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. It is a lot of fun. And so let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. In the game, players are going to be rolling the dice to create the best poker hands using the dice that they have. And these dice will each have a value from ace through nine on them. There are a number of different decks of cards included in the game. I'd like to take a closer look at each one of these now. So the first deck we have are the high noon cards. At the beginning of each player's turn, they're going to draw one of the high noon cards and resolve the effects on the card. Some of these cards will have positive effects and others will have negative effects. This deck is also going to count as the game's timer. During the round when the last card is drawn, each of the players will finish their turn so that all players have had an equal number of turns, and at the end of that round the game will be over. Then we have the long arm of the law cards. These cards represent the law bot's response to the raiders raiding the train. Some of these cards will tell you to place new law bots on that train tile that they're drawn for, and some of them will also have grit effects which will give the law bots bonuses during that first fight that that card is in effect for. Then we have loot cards, which will grant players double dollars or particular weapons or other items that they can use that will make them a little bit better during the game. And then finally we have the player cards themselves, which will have the name of the player, and each player will also have a special ability that they will be able to use during specific parts of the game. Rail Raiders is going to be played on a number of different tiles, which represent the train that the players are on. Each train is always going to have a locomotive, and a caboose, as well as a number of train cars that will start the game face down based on the number of players. Each of these cars is going to have its own name and effects when the players reveal it, and each car will also list a number of long arm of the law cards that the players must draw when the card is revealed the first time and resolve, and a number of loot tokens that the players will place on there face down. For board setup, the first thing you're going to do is place out the locomotive on one end of the board and the caboose on the other. 
From there, then you're going to grab the rest of the tiles face down, shuffle them up, and deal out a number of them in between those cars based on the number of players that are playing plus two. So we're going to set up for a three-player game. So I would place out five of the train cars in between our two there. But for size constraints, I'm only going to set out two for this demo game. But like I said, normally you would use this chart, and based on the number of players is the number of train cars you would put out. From here, then we can place out the other tokens. So we have the double dollars and all of the loot card uh, tokens that you're going to just keep in a pile face down. And you can mix them up. From here, then we can go ahead and shuffle up the rest of the decks. So we have the Long Arm of the Law deck, the Loot deck, and the High Noon deck. For this one, we're going to shuffle it up as normal. And based on the number of players again, we're going to pull out a number of cards. So each player that's playing will add eight cards to the deck. So again, we're playing a three player game, so we'll count out 24 cards. This will make up our high noon deck for the game and will count as the timer as well. From here, then each player can go ahead and get their dice. So each player will receive five poker dice. And each player is going to go ahead and simultaneously roll these dice to determine who gets to choose their character first. So again, we would do that in order of whoever rolls the best hands. So we have a pair of jacks here, ace high. We have a pair of kings, ace high. And finally, we have a pair of nines, ace high. So our middle player here will get to choose who he wants to play first. So our middle player is going to take Huckleberry. Then we have the next player it will be that one who's going to take Josie. And our final player will take that character. So each player will receive the character card and the mini to go along with it. And then the players are going to go ahead and roll off again to determine who will be the starting player for the game and will receive the dealer token. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it to Huckleberry. And then uh, another thing is that each player should get a quick reference card, which is going to list the different hand ranks and will also list how the law bots work. The last thing we need to do before starting the game is to conduct the free boarding action. This only happens at the beginning of the game and we'll start with the dealer player and proceed in a clockwise manner. Each player at this point will get to choose whether they want to start on the caboose or press their luck and try to get onto one of the other cars. If they would like to get into the caboose, it is a free action and they will not have to roll their dice and they're simply just placed in the caboose. If they want to start in one of the other cars, they're going to count the number of cars that is from the caboose and add two to that result, which will become the minimum roll that they must achieve on their poker dice in order to board that car. If they fail, then they will simply stay on their character card and must try again during their turn. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and start with Huckleberry, and he doesn't really feel that lucky right now, so he is going to just go ahead and start in the caboose. And so we'll move on to Oakley, and she is also going to go in the caboose. And Geronimo is a little bit more risky, so he is going to try to get into this car here. So he needs to achieve a minimum hand rank of three, which is at least a two pair on his dice. So we got two kings and two jacks. So he does get on that car, so we're going to go ahead and flip that over and place him in there. In doing so, we're going to go ahead and populate the car as well. So it requires two tokens. So we're going to place two loot tokens on there. And we're going to resolve two long arm of the law cards. So the first one is after them, move one of the highest ranking law bots from an adjacent car onto this car, which right now there aren't any law bots. So this one is simply discarded. And we move on to the second one, which is lucky. Put one deputy on the car and then it has a grid effect, so law bots on this car may reroll up to two dice in fights. So let's go ahead and put on a deputy. 
and this will just go off to the side here as it'll affect this this car for the first fight and we're ready to start the game from here so we're gonna go ahead and start with Huckleberry and during a player's turn the first thing they're going to do is draw and resolve a high noon card now there are a couple exceptions to this based on the cars that you're on so with our players over here being in the caboose, the caboose has a special action that's listed on top and it says when you start your turn here, you do not have to draw a high noon card and you may add a loot token to the car that is adjacent to the locomotive even if it is face down. So our player here does not have to resolve a high noon card and so then he can also add one loot token to a, the car that is adjacent to the locomotive even if it's face down. So we'll go ahead and do that. So then during his turn, a player's turn, they can take up to three actions with the Raider. They, the one rule to this is that they cannot perform the same action type more than two times during their turn. And there are a number of different actions which we're going to take a closer look at each one of those. The first type of action a player can perform is a move action. When a Raider moves, they can move from their current car to an adjacent car, and there are no restrictions to this unless there are cards or other effects in play that prevent them. So Huckleberry here could spend his first action to move into this passenger car, and then he could choose to use another action to move on to the next car if he wanted to, even though there are other players and lawbots in the previous car. There are no restrictions to his movement. Another action our player can perform is a showdown action. Select one raider on the same car or lawbots to target and this will start a fight. Before the fight, each player on the same car that isn't the showdown's target can decide to participate. You're going to go clockwise around the table from the active player to determine which raiders would like to participate in this. If lawbots are not the target, then they will not participate. And if lawbots are involved, then the first player to the player's left that is not in the fight will control the bots. Otherwise, the dealer will control them if all players are involved. All lawbots fight as a team, so only roll once. If the lawbots include a sheriff, you're going to get to re-roll one dice. And if they include a marshal, you're going to roll one additional dice for their hand. The highest hand will win. And if there are ties, then those players will roll off to determine the winner. The Raiders that lose the fight, in the order chosen by the winner, must move to an adjacent train car of the winner's choice. And if a Raider that is moved by a fight has more double dollars than the winner, the winner may take one of the loser's double dollars. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. We have Huckleberry here. He's going to spend his first action to move into this car here. And he's going to spend his second action to start a showdown with the Lawbot. From here, it's going to proceed around the table to each player that is in that space. So Geronimo here has the option to jump into that fight if he wants to. And so he is going to decide that he would like to participate in that fight. From here, then each of the players is going to roll dice. And our Oakley player will roll the dice for the Lawbots. So let's just go ahead and start with Huckleberry. Normally this is all done together, but I don't have enough hands to roll all the dice independently. So Huckleberry got a pair of aces, nine, king, and queen, and he has a special ability. It says, during a showdown, you may change one of your dice to an ace after rerolls are resolved. So as he doesn't have any rerolls to perform, he's going to change the nine here to another ace to give him three of a kind. Moving over to Geronimo, he'll go ahead and roll his dice. And he has two kings and two queens. Finally, we head over to Oakley, who's going to roll for the Lawbots. And they've got a pair of jacks. But they also have the ability here, Lawbots on this car may reroll up to two dice in fights. So they're going to go ahead and do that. They're going to go ahead and roll their two dice over. And they have another ace and a ten again. So according to our hand rank, three of a kind is going to be rank four versus the other two players that have a rank three hand. 
So Huckleberry will be the winner. And so he will destroy the Lawbot since that was his target. And when you destroy a Lawbot, you will receive double dollars equal to that bot type. So deputies will give that player one double dollar. Sheriffs give them two and the marshals would give them three and you would eliminate the lowest law bot on there. So even if there was, say there was two deputies, a sheriff and a marshal, the deputies would be the first ones to go. From here, then Huckleberry will choose the other players to move off of the train. So he's going to push him back as he could have pushed him forward or back. And again, uh, Geronimo does not have any double dollars now, but if Geronimo, say, had two double dollars, then Huckleberry could have taken one of those for himself. And you can choose the order in which you do this as well. So if Huckleberry would have won and both of the other players would have had more than him, he could have chosen the order of which he moved those players, which could have made a difference in way, the way he gathered his double dollars from them. The one other thing is each time a card with a grid ability is in effect, it happens, it only contributes to one fight, so now that this fight has been resolved, this card will be discarded. And if there was another card that granted a grit ability, then it would become in effect. Another action our player can perform is a search action. As long as our player is in a car without any law bots in it, he can perform a search action by taking the top token from the stack and resolving that token, which will tell him how many loot cards he will draw, from there, he would reveal the, that number of loot cards and choose one of them to either equip or gain the rewards from, and then he would discard the rest. Now, if there are other raiders in the same car, they can choose to oppose the search by trying to stop the raider from picking up the loot token. Starting with the player to the active player's left, each player has the option to try to oppose that player. If they do, then they will enter into a fight. With the results of the fight, if the player that performed the search action wins the fight, then he can complete his search by taking the, the token. And if he loses the fight, then he will not be able to complete that search action and will lose that action. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So our Huckleberry player here has one action left, so he's going to go ahead and do a search action. So he'll take the top token, flip it over. It is a one, so he'll take the top loot card. It is the machine rifle. So he's going to go ahead and equip this to his player. And then he would discard that token back into the pile. And you can go ahead and mix that pile back up. Now let's go ahead and say, for example, that Geronimo was in here with our player instead and wished to oppose him. At that point, then those two players would roll off and the player that has the best hand would be the winner. And we're going to go ahead and say, for example, that Geronimo happened to roll better than Huckleberry. So he would stop Huckleberry from, from completing that search action, and so he would simply have just wasted that action. The last action that a player can perform is a pass action. So a player that has any remaining actions left can choose to pass and end their turn immediately. All these extra actions would be lost, and the, it would move on to the next player to start their turn. Once a player is done performing the actions they wish to perform or are out of actions, they're going to move into the final phase of their turn, which is the cleanup phase. During this phase, there are going to be cards that players will have or high noon cards or, or long arm of the law cards or whatever that will last until the end of that player's turn. At this point, during the cleanup phase is when these cards will be discarded from that player and will no longer take effect. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more turns for our players. So now that Huckleberry is done, we're going to move on to Geronimo. And let's go ahead and say for this game that he didn't get pushed away into this car. That way we can resolve a High Noon card. So at the beginning of his phase, he would draw the top card of the High Noon deck, which is Hot Lead Flying. Roll an additional die in showdowns this turn. So this card will stay in his, uh, by him until the end of the turn, until he moves into his cleanup phase. From here, he's going to go ahead and move on into this next car. So this is his first action, so we'll go ahead and flip over this car. And so we have a dining car. Uh, when this car is turned face up, put one deputy on this car. All right, And then we'll add three tokens to it on top of the one that we already had. And then we're going to resolve 
three long arm of the law cards. So our first one is deputy. We're going to put another deputy into this car. Then protect and serve, draw two more long arm of the law cards. So that is our second card. So now we have to do three more because we have to resolve one more for the, the card and then two more for that one. So this one is protect the locomotive, move one of the lowest ranking law bots in each car, one car towards the locomotive. So our deputy will move off into there. And that will take care of our three from that. So we have to resolve the two other ones. Put one marshal in the car. So we'll add a marshal in there. And our last card is protect the locomotive. Again, we're going to move one deputy into the locomotive or towards the locomotive, which in this case will be the locomotive. All right. From here, then we can proceed with our turn. So Geronimo here has two actions left. So he's going to perform in a, a fight action against the marshal. So he's going to roll his dice, and Oakley will roll the dice for the marshal. So Geronimo rolled two nines, a ten, queen, and jack. And he's allowed to roll an additional dice for this turn for showdowns, so he'll go ahead and roll one more dice. And he has another ten, so that'll give him two pair, and he'll keep the queen high. So then Oakley's going to roll for the Marshal, which he will also gain an additional dice, which is his special ability. So we have a pair of jacks, king-queen, 10-9. So our Marshal has only ended up with one pair, where our Geronimo has two pairs. So he's going to beat him with a high, a uh, card or a hand rank of three versus a hand rank of two. So the marshal will be destroyed, and our player will receive three double dollars for destroying the law bot. His last action this turn, he's going to go ahead and do a search action. So he'll flip over the token, which gives him two loot cards. So we have score, he could get two double dollars, or score, he get two double dollars. So I guess we're getting two double dollars. So that puts him up to five already, and then he'll discard those cards. At the end of his turn, we would discard this card as it is during his cleanup phase. Then we'll move over to the next player, which is Oakley. So she's going to go ahead and take her turn. Again, she's in the caboose, so she doesn't need to resolve the high noon card, and she'll place one token in the dining car. Then she's going to take her turn, so she'll spend one action to move here. Her second action, she's going to go ahead and initiate a fight against Huckleberry. She's going to try to get him off the space. So she's going to go ahead and roll her dice first. And she rolls a pair of queens and a pair of nines with an ace high. So she has a hand rank of three. And Huckleberry will roll his dice. He has two aces and three nines. So he is going to beat her with a better hand. As his hand rank is going to be a rank six with a full house. So she's going to get pushed to another car of his choice. And so her second or her last action is going to be to move back into this car. Now, the one other thing I want to go over real quick is players' hands and how many cards they can have equipped. So any player can have any number of cards equipped to their character, but before a fight, before the dice are rolled, each character can only choose to use one weapon card in that fight. So they must select that before rolling the dice. From here... At this point, the players would continue taking turns round after round until the, the one player drew the last high noon card. At that point, that round would be completed. Any player that hadn't gone yet would get to take their final turn, and then that round would end the game. At that point, the players would total up the number of double dollars that they have, and the player that has the most double dollars at the end of the game will be the overall winner of the game. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. 
And if you guys enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does help me grow and bring new and exciting games to you guys. And also, thank you so much for watching my videos. I do really appreciate the fact that you guys take the time to watch my videos and to leave me feedback on them. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this game. Is this one that you're interested in picking up or trying? Is it, is, what other games from Ninja Division do you guys enjoy playing? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in those comments below, and I'll look forward to reading them. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.